It starts out innocently enough, as these things often do. An article is written for an academic journal, but you never think it's going to go anywhere. It's just a nice, plausible theory about how the world may operate, until Democrats get a hold of it. And lo and behold, what you wind up with is what started out yesterday in Colorado, where a court is now trying to determine if Donald Trump should be allowed to stay on the ballot for president or not. What are we talking about? Hang on, folks. We're going to get into all this in just one second. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative. Step on up to my electronic front porch and let's talk. In August of this year, two academic scholars wrote an article for a law journal positing the question, if someone were convicted of insurrection, could they be denied access to the presidential ballot under... Amendment 14, Section 3 of the United States Constitution. Well, as opposed to leaving it as a purely academic question, six voters in Colorado filed suit to put that to the test. In other words, Donald Trump, the Republican nominee, well, presumptive nominee for president, should he be kicked off the ballot? Well, that leads to an article from the New York Times, and that is where we will start our analysis of this very interesting question. Article written by our friends at the Times that go under the name of Maggie Astor, we read the following. Something the nation has never seen before began playing out in a Denver courtroom Monday morning. A trial to determine whether a major party's likely presidential nominee is eligible to be president at all. The lawsuit filed in September by six Colorado voters with the help of a watchdog group, Citizens for Responsible Ethics in Washington, argues that former President Donald J. Trump is ineligible to hold office again under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. That section disqualifies anyone who engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution after having taken an oath to support it. The plaintiffs say that Mr. Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, namely his actions before and while his supporters stormed the Capitol on January 6, 2021, to try to stop the certification of Joseph R. Biden Jr.'s victory, meet the disqualification criteria. Sarah B. Wallace, the state district court judge presiding over the case, rejected multiple requests from Mr. Trump and the Colorado Republican State Central Committee in recent weeks to dismiss the case without a trial. Judge Wallace also on Monday rejected a call for her to recuse herself because she had donated to an organization that opposes Republican candidates in Colorado, a donation that Mr. Trump's presidential campaign is fervently highlighting. She said she had not formed any opinion on the legal issues in this case. Okay, let's get into this. I'd done a video previously about this very issue, explaining why all this came about and what the origins are. So let's sort of review some of that information. Let's go first to Amendment Number 14 to the U.S. Constitution, Section 3, and we'll take a look at what some are claiming is the legal basis to keep Donald Trump off the ballot. Section 3 of Article, excuse me, Amendment 14 reads as follows. No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath, as a member of Congress, or as an officer of the United States, or as a member of any state legislature, or as an executive or judicial officer of any state, to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof, but Congress may, by a two-thirds vote of each House, remove such disability. Now, that's the section of Amendment Number 14, and that is the rub. Some are arguing that what Trump did or didn't do on January 6, 2021, 
constitutes insurrection, and therefore he should be kept off the ballot. I'll also point out an article, part of an article from Breitbart, and we read the following headline. This talks about the case out in Colorado, court arguments on blocking Trump from presidential ballot under the insurrection clause begins. I want to go deep into this article and read a couple of different things, which I think are very interesting. Talking about Section 3 of Amendment 14, the clause has only been used a handful of times since immediately after the Civil War. Trump's lawyers contend that it was never meant to apply to the office of president, which is not mentioned in the text, unlike senator or representative in Congress, and elector of president and vice president. The provision allows Congress to grant amnesty, as it was done in 1872, to allow former Confederates back into the government, which has led some to argue that it has no power without an enabling act of Congress. Finally, Trump's lawyers contend the former president was never engaged in insurrection, hang on to that point, folks, because that's important, and was simply exercising his free speech rights to warn about election results he did not believe were legitimate. Now, one other paragraph I'll read. The lawyers are expected to delve deeply into the history of the drafting of the provision of the 14th Amendment and its use between its adoption in 1868 and the amnesty law in 1872. There is scant legal precedent on the issue, so little that the attorneys have had to argue about the meaning of the 1869 case written by Salmon Chase, who was then Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, but wrote only as an appeals judge. After the Amnesty Act of 1872, legal scholars could only find one other time the provision was cited when Congress refused to seat a socialist member of the House of Representatives because he opposed entry into World War I. Okay, that's the background. Of all the things that Donald Trump has been accused of and charges have been brought against him in four different jurisdictions around the country this year, can anybody please point out to me where he's being charged with either inciting or engaging in insurrection against the government of the United States? I'll wait. Do, de, do, 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 de, do. Well, there's just one little problem. You can't because he hasn't been. Of all the things Donald Trump's been charged with, 91 different counts with the potential for 700 plus years in jail, the one charge that no one has been able to bring, or at this point has been unwilling to bring, is that he engaged in insurrection against the government of the United States. Therefore, how can you sit there and say, Secretary of State Griswold, that he engaged in insurrection if no court has been willing to charge him? And furthermore, during the second impeachment trial, that's the very question that was brought, and the Senate opted not to convict him thereof. So again, there's no charge of insurrection to make stick. Now, if you're wondering what insurrection is under U.S. law, here's the legal definition. Under 18 U.S.C., rebellion or insurrection is a federal offense that criminalizes inciting, engaging in, or giving aid and comfort to any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or its laws. A rebellion is usually an armed, organized, and often violent resistance to governmental authority. I'd like to take you back to an article brought by or written by um, Jonathan Turley in thehill.com because this is fairly interesting. Headline, The Disqualification of Donald Trump and Other Legal Urban Legends. I want to take you deep into this article because Turley makes a fantastic point. And this definitely ought to be observed. But even the view that this, talking about January 6th, was an insurrection is by no means a consensus. Polls have shown that most of the public viewed January 6th for what it was, a protest that became a riot. One year after the riot, CBS News mostly downplayed and ignored the result of its own poll, showing that 76% viewed it for what it was, a protest gone too far. The view that it was an actual insurrection was far less settled, with almost half rejecting the claim, a division breaking along partisan lines. Now, a couple other things I'll bring to your attention. This is a, um, a snippet of an interview with Alan Dershowitz and... 
Steve Bannon. Bannon's conducting the interview. Dershowitz is answering the questions. And they talk about the origins of the 14th Amendment, Section 3. I want you to listen to what Dershowitz has to say about all this. T folks, take a listen to this. I just want to go back to the to the to the and I've only got a minute here, but I'll hold you through when they came out with their initial analysis on the 14th Amendment. You said that was dead wrong. That was only about the Civil War. Can you give us a minute on that before we go to break? Sure. The 14th Amendment is about the Civil War. It talks about not having to pay for emancipated slaves. It talks about not having to pay the debts of the Confederacy. And then it says people who have been involved in the in the in the revolt, which meant the Civil War. And you didn't need a procedure for that. <laughs> Confederates were proudly proclaiming their uh, their support for the Confederacy. So it was very obvious who fought against the United States. But if you try to project that now, uh, 150, 60 years forward, you need a process, you need a procedure. And the 14th Amendment was designed only, only to make sure that those who fought in the Civil War against the Union could not run for office. Well, that's not my opinion. That's the opinion of a very learned legal scholar. But I'll give you one last thing. This is from Mike Davis of the Article 3 Project, talking specifically about what would have to happen in order for Trump to be taken off the ballot. Folks, I want you to listen to this, because this is very, very telling. This is madness. There is a, a, a court case from 1869 that addressed this point directly, that she, uh, Chief Justice Samuel Chase heard this back in 1869 when they were trying to disqualify people from running from office, Confederate sympathizers and insurrectionists from running for office. And Chief Justice Samuel Chase clearly held that if you want to disqualify under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment for engaging in insurrection or rebellion, Congress has to pass a federal criminal statute under Section 5 of the 14th Amendment. Congress did that in 1870. Congress passed an insurrection or rebellion statute that disqualifies. So if you want to disqualify Trump or any other candidate, you have to bring federal criminal charges in a federal criminal court and get a federal criminal jury to unanimously find that defendant was guilty under that specific insurrection or rebellion criminal statute. It has to be uh, the, the district court judge has to convict and it has to be upheld on appeal. That is the only way you can remove for insurrection or rebellion to disqualify for insurrection or rebellion under the 14th Amendment. The qualifications to. Folks, why are we even having this trial out in Colorado? I'll tell you why. Because Democrats are desperate. They're looking at the polling numbers. They realize that Joe Biden is in trouble against Donald Trump, and they are doing everything they possibly can to slow down Trump's momentum and keep him distracted. If he's in a courtroom, that means he can't be out on the campaign trail. If his lawyers are having to spend time fighting legal battles, he can't fight political ones. If they have to spend money on fees and filings and lawyers, then that means it's money not spent on campaign ads and all the other things that go along with trying to win the presidency. This is absolutely unsound legal theory, it's unsound law, and it's undemocratic. Let the American people decide if Donald Trump should go back to the office, because the law is very clear about who can and cannot be held off a ballot. Trump meets all the legal qualifications to run for president under the United States Constitution. He's never been convicted of insurrection. Therefore, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment does not apply. Can we please get back to having a real presidential election? You Democrats out there, would you like to actually have an honest, fair, open, and transparent process? Oh, I forgot. You can't win if that happens. But that's what I think. What do you think about it? As we start to wrap up this video, please do me some favors as always. Number one, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please do so. Number two, please leave a comment below. I would love to know what you think about all this. Number three, please hit the bell for notifications. I want to make sure you're always aware when new videos, new live streams are coming out. Number four, share the video around. And finally, give me a thumbs up. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative and I'll see you next time.